Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor. And today for our project, we are doing our window cap project from our Pals with Paws watercolor box. Ah. Ah. We have Michael here working the cameras. Oh, hello. And this is my friend, Birdie. She's my dog. <laughs> She's our dog because we're married. Yeah. Um, and she's just the best thing in the whole world. So we thought we would bring her in as we're celebrating our four legged friends this month. Okay? <laughs> okay, Birdie, I'm going to put you down. Good girl. Lay down. You can stand. Okay. <laughs> so we are going to be doing this project in seven steps. She came to me because she wants more pets. She's over <laughs> here now. She wanted more love. Um, our very first step is we are going to paint the windows. Our second step is we are going to paint the tree trunks um, within the windows. Our third step is we will be doing the window sill and the, what are these called, dear? Do you know? The things between the panes. The things between the panes, obviously. Um, our fourth step is we'll paint our cat's body. Our fifth step, fifth step is we'll do the eyes and the nose and any kind of details on the mouth. Our um, sixth step is we will be um, doing shadow on the cat because we would want to do two layers here. And then our very last step is just any finishing details. Uh, those are called grills. Grills? G-R-I-L-L-E-S. Grills. Gr grills or grill-S. grill, -S. grill -S. <laughs> Um. Now, I already transferred my outline. Something that's really helpful with transferring this since we're doing like windows and more angles is I actually used a ruler to do my straight edges when it came to my window. So that's helpful when you're transferring that outline and maybe even, well, I don't know about painting, but I don't know. So I had one of those handy. Um, we are using four colors in this project. I mean, I'm sorry, four paintbrushes. Round two, round six, round 12, and one inch wash. We're using five colors, rose red, deep blue, Payne's gray, honey brown, and bleed proof white. Now, please remember, um, use whatever supplies you have. You can use whatever you have, no big deal. And taped my paper down, have my butcher tray, things ready. I had a heated craft tool and let's get going. Let's do it. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Oh, got Thank that you. one good. I really wish, Birdie is not a barker, but how perfect would it be if she like barked at that last second? That would be perfect. We, could, we couldn't even get her to bark, to be honest. She's just, she's just not a barker. She has a big girl bark though. She does, it's really deep. She's not that big, but she's got a big old bark. She only barks once when people knock on our door that we're not expecting. She'll go, Ruff, and lets us know that they're there and that's it, which is amazing. <laughs> okay, so for our first step, the process of how we're gonna do this is I'm gonna use a one inch wash to wet the pane area, the window pane area. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna drop in color and that's gonna diffuse. This is how we're going to create the illusion that the outside is fuzzy and we can't actually see details. Um, and then with the cat and the window seal that's inside, we should be able to see all of that in focus. So just so you know, with watercolor, whenever you're trying to create a scene where something is out of focus and fuzzy, if you just do it while your paper is wet, then that paint will automatically fuzz and diffuse out, which is gonna give you that fuzzy soft focus. So we're essentially gonna focus on that technique today. So then you can take that and apply that to your own projects, okay? Lovely. So what I'm going to have ready is I have clean water, looks gray. Does it not look gray? Weird. Um, don't drink it. Don't drink it. I've done that before. I'm going to use clean water to wet the window pane and then I'm going to have, let's actually mix those. I'm going to mix a little bit of my honey brown with the red to get kind of like an orange. Is that birdie? Yeah, she just hit her head. Oh, you okay bird? And add some water in with my honey brown to get like a light yellow. And let's do even a darker one, um, like a darker orange. Now you can do this with green too, um, but 
that's what I forgot to say. This photo was submitted to us from one of our uh, members in our community. That's cool. So if you're part of the Watercolor Facebook group a long time ago, like months ago, I said, you know, please post a picture of your pet. Okay. And I didn't say what I was going to do with it. And there were a thousand comments, literally. <laughs> and I went through every single one and I picked three photos to use as reference photos for this month's box. So right now, this is the person. I'm going to give you their name later, dear, and you'll um, put that on here. Through the magic of the movies. There it is. Thank you for that person who uploaded this photo. I thought this photo was stunning and I thought it was great that there was like window and highlights and all of this stuff. So um, that's why I chose this to paint. Also a cute cat. So cute. So cute. And honestly, like uh, we all have things that we struggle with painting. Cats are one of them for me. I love cats. I can't paint them to save my life, but the only way that we can improve is by continuing to paint them. So I am painting two cats this month and so are you and it's going to be great. Cats are your spirit animal. Cats are my spirit animal for real. Okay. Um, let's get going. So I'm going to take some water and I am going to wet the entire area. And I'm gonna do it square by square or chunk by chunk because I really don't want this to dry out. And this is where a wash brush comes in handy because we want a square edge when we're working between the grills. So, Super handy to have. Way easier to get a straight line with a wash brush than with a round brush. Okay, now working quickly while that is still wet, let's start with our lighter value. And I'm just gonna, you see how I'm just dropping it in and I'm letting it move. Now the other tricky thing here is we will want to um, like work around the cat and the panes, but the trees are independent of both of those things. So we have to keep like the, um, the colors going and the tree continuing on as if the window panes and cat aren't there, but we just have to be careful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you can see this is already bleeding out beautifully. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and take my little bit of a darker value here and introduce that as well. And by having both of these values, we're showing that these trees and leaves are dimensional, that there are chunks of them, that there are shadows. Now, I've just noticed this, so I'm gonna say it out loud. All of my marks that I'm dropping in are the same. You see that? Do, 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 do. So I'm gonna purposely go in there and mess some of those up and kind of smear things around, give it some character, because our brain likes to create patterns and unless we purposely smear it out, we're gonna have the same marks everywhere. And what that will do is it will actually flatten our painting. Now I can tell that my paper is starting to dry, not totally, but I could just see how the paint is moving within it that I'm getting close to um, like, mm, how do I say this? In English. <laughs> I told uh, Sarah, she, Sarah prefaces by saying, how do I say this? And I said, if you want to sound real smart, say, how do I say this in English? So people think that English is your second language, <laughs> but you speak so clearly in English. It's a good trick. How do I say this in English? I don't speak another language. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> It's just something that you want to be aware of. If you can tell that your paper is starting to dry, then you kind of have to make a mental note like, okay, I got to like hurry up or I need to um, leave some stuff alone, that kind of stuff. And then I went in and I dropped in some really dark here, especially on this right hand side, the one that's closest to us. We want to have a range of values in there. Um, so I'm just kind of going throughout and dropping them in. And remember to randomly smear and swoop so you don't get the same 
mark over and over again. We're trying to create the illusion of fuzzy leaves. And if you want to use like a different brush, go for it. I wish fall lasted longer. Oh, me too. Because it's really beautiful for like eight days. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. And then I was starting to feel like my marks were feeling too tie dye -y. And so if that happens, um, I just like to blend and soften some of it. Because what we don't want is we don't want this wet on wet texture and these really cool marks to distract from everything. So if it's starting to take on too much life, then we need to be like, okay, let's soften some of this so then our viewer doesn't feel overwhelmed with activity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one window pane. And now we're gonna move on to the next. That's funny. My line didn't continue, but that's okay. I just can um, eyeball it. So I applied the clean water. Let's get some light yellow. Drop that in. Now don't forget to let some of the white show through too. And then same thing down here. This is the trickiest part because we're working around fuzzy, but because it's gonna be like a black silhouette pretty much, you can overlap into the cat. Okay. Do you think you're more of a cat person or more of a dog person? I mean, I've had more dogs and I've had cats, so I can't, I don't think that I can answer that question. I don't, until I actually have like an indoor pet cat. Mm. Or third option, more of a snake person. Mm, snakes, you know what? Snakes really are a fabulous pet. Just because they're low maintenance? They're so low maintenance. It's crazy how low maintenance they are. Um, my daughter, my 11 year old daughter and I, won a snake at a reptile expo years ago. This is mm -hmm. the snake that Sarah's referring to. Yeah. We put our names in a giant fish tank. You like write it on a piece of paper and they drew out our names and we won. Yeah, it was funny because um, my husband had a snake and he was just like, let's get another snake. You know, it like passed away years ago or something. And I was just like, I really don't want another snake. Um, and then the next thing I know, he's calling me from the reptile exhibit with our daughter and be like, we want a pet snake. I'm like, sure you want a pet snake. I need receipts. Where? <laughs> Tell me you just didn't buy it. So it was kind of funny. Okay. And now I'm going to do this last section right here. Now I want to call it attention to something, which is on the reference photo, you see more of the window than what I've um, did the outline for. Um, and that's because I needed to crop this into an eight and a half by 11. I like to crop the outlines. Well, one, we have to do an eight and a half by 11 because that's the size of a printer sheet of paper, which is what outlines go on. And, um, you usually never paint the entire nine by 12 paper. You always want to crop it down. Okay. And just, then just a rule, just an unspoken rule or what? I mean, um, like I was just taught in art school that, um, even with a canvas or like not a canvas, but when you're working on paper, you always just want to like identify your paintable area. Mm. So you always just kind of crop it down and then, it just gives you um, more control over composition and things like that. It's it's just kind of helpful. And then you can make, like if you paint outside of watercolor, you can make canvases pretty much any size you want, um, which would essentially be you creating your paintable area. Oh, uh, got you. Okay. There's that. Now we're going to move on to step two, and we are going to put in our tree trunk. Now the kind of tricky thing about our tree trunk is we want it – um, to be there, but not so sharp. 
but we also don't want it to be too fuzzy that the brown just bleeds out everywhere. So we want our paper to be mostly dry, not totally dry. And we also don't want it to be too wet because if it's too wet, it'll just whew. So what I like to do, I'm gonna mix blue, honey brown, red together, and I'm gonna get this kind of reddish brown, but I wanna tone down the redness of it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. And that's just gonna desaturate that brown for me. And let's lighten it up in value. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water and I'm just going to test to see what it does. You kind of watch it for a second and go, okay, that's mostly staying there. Um, so let's start to put in some of these. You saying mostly reminds me of Billy Crystal in The Princess Bride. when he's like, he's not dead, he's mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is so funny. That is so funny. Now, when it comes to these tree trunks, think about how tree trunks um, kind of weave in and out of the leaves. So we'll see some parts, and I'm using my 12 for this, but know that you can use whatever you want. So as you're painting your tree trunks, you want the, think about how the branches are gonna like peek in and out of the leaves. So I kind of like put some of that in the outline a little bit. And then I'm gonna switch, you can switch to your six or your two. And um, there's kind of like branches going everywhere. And this is a thick trunk right here on the right hand side. We pretty much just don't want the trunks and branches to um, overtake or distract. So we're just putting them there so people can have more context that these are trees. So we're just doing little bits of information. So I'm just kind of taking my two, and you see how up here it's obviously more wet, so those are fuzzing out a little bit more. That's fine. And remember, the tree branches are independent of the windowsill, so if you have one going this way, then it would continue on through. And we don't have like a crazy amount, it's just here and there. I feel like I need a hint. Okay, that feels good. I'm gonna leave it. Later, if you wanna add more to it, you can, but remember, we're trying to just create like a diffused, fuzzy look out of focus. Okay, now we're gonna move on to step three and we're gonna paint the windowsill. Now, uh, two things I want to acknowledge before we start painting. Two, this is very much all about different values. That's how we're going to be able to tell that there's different planes going on here and angles. Um, so it's all about value control, which is kind of an intermediate concept. So if you're just starting out and you're struggling with it, please know it's normal that you're struggling with it. You probably should be struggling with it just because it's a tricky concept. Um, the second thing that I need to call attention to is the windowsill is white, but when things are shadowed, um, white can take on a lot of different colors. So we'll actually be using blue and Payne's gray for this windowsill, um, but the, um, like, how do I say this? If you're looking at the colors to see what the colors are for what they are, they're blue. But if you take a step back and look at the painting as a whole, you're not thinking that's a blue house, that's a blue windowsill, it's just reading as a windowsill. Does that make sense? So our brain will play tricks on us where we think, I'm only gonna use gray, but I don't want you to only use gray. You need to use blue in there. It's the black, blue dress, gold dress. Yes, thing. yes. Okay, so 
when it comes to this windowsill, and if you need to make little notes, sometimes that's helpful, okay? So if you look, we have this edge right here. This is a light value. So even very lightly, you can write LV, light value. This is a dark value. This is a light value. This is a dark value. And this is a light value. And you see the pattern here, it's because they're coming out, so the light is hitting it, and then the ones that are dark are standing straight up because it's shadowed, the light is not hitting it. So it's going duh, 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 okay? Um, and then here, we'll do this in like a light value, but we'll just do one like dark edge to show that it's dimensional, that it has like a little shadow to it. And then this is just the smallest detail. But think about glossy white paint and how it will glare. And so the tree itself is casting like a glare onto this window edge right here, windowsill. So we'll do the softest hint of that in there. And it's little details like that. Um, they're not difficult concepts, but those kinds of additions, those small details are really what elevate your work. Okay, so let's start with the light value. Um, I'm gonna flip my palette here where I have just Payne's Gray and Berry Blue, I mean Deep Blue. So Payne's Gray, Deep Blue. And I don't want it to read too blue, but I don't want it to just be gray. So I'm doing kind of an even mix, 50-50, and I'm gonna add some water to that and see where that, how that feels. That feels pretty good, actually. And then let's add more water to it right here, maybe a bit more blue. Too much blue, and this is it. I just kind of go back and forth. Okay. So using this six, I'm going to paint this light value. Now, your values need to relate to each other. So let's say you put this color down and just know that this darker value just has to be a darker value. So even if this value you put down is not light on your own painting, you can keep going. You just have to make sure the next, the other values relate to it. If that makes sense. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my two and using this darker value that I mixed right on the edge here, It is really hard to do a super straight line though, so if it gets wonky, be kind to yourself, it's okay. Then I'm gonna dry that. Also, I mean, you'll see here that my letters are showing up, my light value, dark value letters are showing up because watercolor is transparent. So if you wanna put it like on the side of your painting, on like the taped area, that might make more sense <laughs> than on your actual painting. When I was remodeling our house, I um, labeled trim in real life, like I would write uh, with a Sharpie on it. So I made sure I put it in the right window. In mm -hmm. the... So this might actually be true to life. <laughs> there might actually be little notes. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to do, well, actually, it, I think it makes more sense for us to put all of our light values in at the same time. So I'm going to skip my dark value, move to my lighter value. And I always like to grab color, start with it, and then use just water to spread it out. Now this is kind of a bigger area for a round six. I'm gonna keep going with it, but if you wanna to switch to your round 12 just for this area, I support that decision. Okay. And if, um, how do I say this? If you do have a slight value change, you would want it to be right here at the top. You don't want it at the bottom because if we're thinking about how things are jutting out at us, this window seal edge should be the, the lightest light right here because it's jutting out the most, so that light will hit it the most. 
Okay, and then let's go ahead and do the other light area while we're here. Sometimes it's just easier to do it while you have all the all ready on your paintbrush. And then the cat has a little bit of a shadow, right? We gotta ground it. So I'm gonna take a little bit more color. I'm working around the paws. We can go ahead and put that shadow in. We were um, brainstorming ideas for names for this pet box before the pet box was really finalized. And I thought it would be awesome because most of these creatures have paws to call it the paw some box, P-A-W, some. And we had a good laugh about that and it was really great. And uh, Sarah came into work and was talking to the let's make art people about it. And they're like, why would you do a whole box on possums? Yeah. They I'm like, it was possum. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to call it the possum box. And they were like, are you going to paint a possum in there? And I went, oh, that really only works written down. Yeah. <laughs> So possum. when you talk about it, so we changed it. To I do them. love possums, though. I wish you would do a possum-themed box. You do wish. Okay, maybe one day. <laughs> okay, we got our light windowsill values in, and now I'm going to do my dark. So I'm going to grab this already dark mixture that I have, and I'm going to slightly move. It's easier for me to kind of be on this side to do straight, long lines, but adjust however you need to. And you really just want to make sure that it is a darker value than what you've just laid down. And I'm really focusing here because I'm trying to be very intentional about my line. And then to give it that extra feeling of depth, think about a corner. Think about how it goes in so this is it being flat, so then this bottom edge will be a little bit darker. Okay. So now it's like boop, 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 okay? Now, I need you guys, when I talk about how values relate to each other, we will look at our light values after we put in our dark values and say, now did our light values completely disappear? Because sometimes when you put a light value next to a dark value, depending on the strength of the dark value, it would totally make the light value disappear. So um, we'll look at that after we paint in this second dark value and see if we need to make any adjustments, okay? now. With this edge, this one is not going to be as dark as this one. I'm actually going to just do one more swoop along this corner. I mean, along the bottom edge here. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more water here. So if this is our light value and this is our dark value, we're looking for something in between. Here, and then I'm going to do a dark edge along the top and along the bottom. And I'm just going to use water to spread that out. Okay. That feels pretty good. And I feel like I need just a hint of a value change along the right hand side here of this window sill. So I'm gonna be brave and I'm just gonna go for it and kind of blend that out.
And it might have been too dark, but I'm just gonna keep going. And remember that you can lift. So if you put color in and you're like, oh, that's a little bit darker than I wanted it to be, then rinse your brush and using clean water, you can try and lighten and lift. Okay, there we go, that feels better. I'm gonna let that um, dry for just a second. And then I'm gonna take my two and using a light medium value, I'm gonna do the, just the softest hint of this line and this tree trunk shadow as if that image is being reflected into a shiny white windowsill. See that? Lovely. Just the littlest hint. Okay. I'm actually gonna darken this one more time. Okay. We got through that. Good job, you guys. I was actually really nervous to do this part because um, it's a it's a tricky concept and trying to get values to match and also doing it while keeping a straight line while also working around this whole other thing. It's a lot, so you guys are doing great. Now what we're gonna do are the grills. So I'm gonna use that kind of same light value that I have already mixed. And using my round six, I'm gonna see if I can just do, if you press down hard, you should get like a thick line, like so. And I'm going to do that along both sides. And you can go into your cat. Hi, Birdie. Birdie came over for a visit. I wish we had this like loose camera on her. Actually, maybe that's not a good idea because she would just be. She's just... looking for snacks. She's on the snack prowl. Is she? Yeah. I have snacks for her in my office. Do you have snacks for me? No. I'm hungry too. <laughs> we got to get some snacks going because I am hungry. Okay. So I'm just kind of continuing on filling in the grills here, changing the pressure of my brush depending on how thick the line is. Okay, and don't get, again, don't get too hard on yourself if you have a wonky line. It's really tricky to get a straight line, so like, be kind, remember our oath. And then to show that there's dimension to these windows, I'm gonna take my round two, I'm gonna grab that like medium dark value or medium value. You just want it to be, we want it to be a darker value than what's there, but not so dark that it looks black. So a medium value here and do a shadow. On the right hand side. My line got wonky. And whenever you get a wonky line, you just, you can either thicken it or you can just say it's a wonky line. It is what it is, you know? I think most of the time, you're the only person who notices it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially with so much going on in a painting. Yeah. Now for others, if you have a ruler, you can even use your reference card as a straight edge, sometimes that's helpful. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm going to show you that it's okay if it's not perfect. But know that using a straight edge is sometimes helpful. Okay. And I 
think my actual grill right here in the middle got a little bit darker in value than I originally anticipated, but I don't think that's bad. And one thing that you can do, and I'm gonna try it here just so you guys can see, is I'm going to take some bleed proof white. Now, just so you guys know, my bleed proof white, I left the cap off and it dried out, but you can reconstitute it. So just grab water and work the water into it and it will come back. Takes a second though. Okay, so now that I have some bleed proof white, if you wanna put like a little bit of a highlight, you can. So know that you can always use bleed proof white as a helper. Okay, I feel better about that. Okay, you guys, you're doing great. This, I mean, I wanna emphasize again, this is not an easy project. There are lots of layers and um, different things to pay attention to, but you're doing great. And we're gonna continue on. We're gonna move on to step four, and this is where we do the cat. Now, the cat is super interesting because, um, it's mostly dark, this left-hand side, because when you have an object or a pet next to a very strong light source, then the front of it is gonna be very highlighted and the rest of it is gonna be super shadowed. So um, we're really focusing, like how we're gonna give all of our shape and dimension to our cat is just the highlighted areas along the right-hand side. And the rest of it is pretty flat, is pretty flat in um, darkness. So I'm gonna start with my um, Payne's Gray and I grabbed a little bit of blue and I am just going to start painting using that color mixture and around two. And then I'm gonna pay attention to where the areas are where there's a highlight. And then I'm just gonna start to kind of lighten my color mixture using water when I get there. So notice that like halfway through, I'm adding water to my mixture and lightening up my um, value. Same thing on the paw. And I'm being pretty fast and loose. Okay. Just like that. And then we have, let's actually continue the ear up here. And I feel pretty comfortable getting a, like drawing with the tip of my round 12. If you don't, that's okay. And you are free to move to a different brush. So the biggest thing I'm kind of focusing on is um, laying down values within here. Notice that I'm not doing, how do I say this? The transition doesn't smoothly go like this. I'm kind of rounding some of these two because you have to think about the cat is not flat. It's not a piece of paper. It's rounding out. So then when I do my brush marks of my shadows, I have to think about the fact that the mouth is rounded. You know what I mean? So those, I'm curving my brush stroke as I get there. Okay. Same thing when it comes to the body. See that my stroke started to curve. I'm following the overall form of the chest of my cat. And you might have to do a couple layers. Remember, this is just our initial layer. And then I'm going to do the other paw here, and I'm going to make sure we want there to be a highlight on the front of this one, and then it gets to dark again because it's going in. This is where they meet. But 
but then it transitions to its highlight. And just so you know, I changed it on the um, reference photo. I had the tail behind the cat totally. And then I thought it probably actually would make sense for the tail to curl around and overlap the paw a little bit more. Um, so that's why if you notice that difference, that's what those differences are. And we still want there to be a value change on this one. So I'm lifting out some of the color so it can stay a lighter value. And I'll go back in and add textures to that so it's kind of popping out a little bit more. Remember, we're, this is just kind of our initial layering. I'm going to continue the face using damp, a damp brush and just pulling color from what's already there. And I want you to pay attention to how, you know, the nose and the forehead and around here it's more highlighted and then we go back in and add just some shadows to give it some shape. Okay. And then if you feel like, oh, we need another layer here because at this point our left hand side should be mostly dry we can go ahead and put that in remember to change the curve of your stroke and don't forget this little guy back here Okay, that's a good start. And now let's go into our face for our eyes and our shadows and things like this. So using my six and use picking up more of that kind of gray color, there is a little bit of a shadow and you can look at your outline. I put little hash marks, but kind of right here on the side of the nose. And then a little hint of the shape of the mouth. Then we're gonna let that dry and let's paint the eyeball. So the eyeball is green. So I'm gonna take honey brown and blue and mix that together. And I'm gonna carefully paint green now there is a pupil here and two glare spots on the eye. Okay. And then the nose is just black. I think, and, it, and it's hard because the this, um, the lighting was strong in this picture, but I'm assuming that this is a, just a dark gray cat. It's not a black cat. I'm pretty sure it's gray. 
And it looks funky because we didn't do the black around the eyes yet or the um, iris. So just give it a second to dry though before we do that. And um, I feel like I need to kind of put a little bit more shape in, medium values in around this face. And then to give the hint of some like fur texture here, I'm gonna do kind of a rough dry stroke into this medium value right here. And that's showing that there's like fur and it's kind of gathered, you know, when cats have a lot of fur and it's gathered and it's super soft right there, it gets this like wave to it a little bit. And you can do a little bit of that on the old lady kitty too. But we're keeping it pretty loose. And then on the tail, I'm gonna switch to my two and do a little like furry, like thin hairs coming out. overlapping the foot, overlapping the windowsill. Okay. Now, the iris is just a little slit because it's we're looking at it from its side. So we're just seeing a hint of it. It's really just a thin curved line, like in your outline. And then I'm gonna take my two and my six and I'm gonna put in the black space around it. What is it called? Black space around an iris? Like this part, but for cats, like the... The goop factory. Kind of, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm thinking of the right thing, but if you look at um, reference photos of cats, there's like this black section. Same with dogs. I'll look it up for you. Okay, thanks. That's feeling pretty good. And then this is where we have to check and see like our values and how they're relating to each other. So I have a really nice highlight going on my cat, but I'm wondering if this area right here is too white, like too bright. So um, I'm just gonna smear the color that's already there around it a little bit and tone that color down. If you don't wanna mess up your lines or anything that you've done so far, you can actually just use um, put paint, bring paint to it instead of trying to just smear what's around it. But I kind of really love smearing my painting. I think it like adds character <laughs> and personality. So I don't, I don't really, um, mind things like that, but it's your painting. So it's up to you. And then I need to put a little bit more of a shadow right here. Sarah, that's their third eyelid. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, Dogs that makes and cats have it. Okay, yes, because I'm like, they have a black area around their eye, but I didn't know what it was called. Third eyelid. Okay, cool. Kind of weird to have three eyelids. Totally. Okay, and we're almost done here, you guys. Just did the back ear. stand up and I feel like this shadow needs to keep going near my eye a little bit more 
And it's okay if you get um, brush strokes within this. It's okay. We don't need it to be perfectly smooth. Um, if anything, it will add to like the fur texture and that kind of thing. So don't feel like it needs to be a perfect smooth transition. Sorry, it was took a long pause before finishing that. Okay. 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 I'm just checking all the different things, seeing how we feel about it. And if you want, you can go in with your two or your six and like sometimes little furs, especially around the ears. I think, I think we're done. If you need to do another layer of Payne's Gray or Dark Shadow on the left-hand side, I had to do quite a few layers, but on this one, um, I feel like I actually was able to get that shadow just about right away. Okay. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. I'm just gonna have this tail kind of come out a little bit more as if it's wrapping around. Um, if you wanna kind of define this little crevice where the legs meet the chest, darken that a little bit, you can. But remember, um, we're just going for general shape and values here. Now, the very last thing that we can do is you can take your bleed proof white and you can do a couple little highlights, like thin lines on the legs here and the chest. Do a little bit on the mouth, you can. But if you lost your highlight, you can totally put it back in with bleed proof white. Just don't go like too white um, because then that will mess with the, um, like the, light the values. with the light values, thank you. So you still want it to feel part of the painting. If it starts to feel if it starts to feel not part of the painting, then I'll actually just take Sorry, I got a big chunk of bleed proof white still. Take color that's already there and just kind of smear it around and that will automatically like gray out that thing, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. See, this is me overworking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's beautiful. We did it. Woo! We painted, I, window cat and um, I hope that you can see how you can take this and apply it into your own work. I hope that you see how the lighting really affects how something can be lit up. I hope that with the window technique, you can see how you can do a fuzzy, out of focus background and um, keep our subject nice and sharp with details, um, which will make it feel realistic to how our eye views things. This was a tricky painting and you guys did awesome sticking through it. So I just wanna say congratulations. I mean, honestly, no matter if your painting turned out or it didn't, you you guys sat here and painted with me for an hour attempting to do projects while I'm trying to communicate to you why you need to do all these different values. It's hard. And so pat yourself on the back for even showing up. Um, I'm so honored and grateful that you choose to paint along with me. Um, there's so many options. <laughs> I feel like a flight attendant. We know that there are so many options when it comes to flying. Thank you for flying with us. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but I mean it. Thank you for painting with me. And I hope that you can take this and apply these techniques into your own practice and your own artwork. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>